Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of The Art Bros. Hey. Art Bros. Uh, today, Mike and Fancy Dave are here. Hey. And we are talking about tapestries. Tapestries. Big, big woven shit. Big woven shit. Big tapestries and unicorns. Yep. Tapestries and unicorns, all right. And fabulous clothing. That we are. Fabulous clothing. Look at these gentlemen. There's, their garbs are beautiful. So dapper. Yeah, so dapper. Look at that. And anyways. Uh, so we're talking about the unicorn tapestries, otherwise known as the hunt of the unicorn. Now, these things are in the cloisters in New York, in the middle of the ghetto. It's a beautiful museum. Go check it out because these things are huge. In fact, I don't think that these photos do justice of how big they are. No. They are monumental. I've seen them in person. They are huge. But we are going to start talking about each one and the story that they tell. Mm -hmm. Plus, we're going to look into what we can find when analyzing these photos. So set of tapestries, or as I like to call it, medieval comic book. This is a huge medieval comic book, is what it is, yeah. So this first one is called, uh, well, first off, this these were made in 1495, mm -hmm. 1405, so it took about five to 10 years to make. Mm -hmm. um, Which, they were, yeah, that looks it, just yeah. from all this detail, even on these ones. Yeah. They're beautifully restored. In fact, um, when they were found, they were, they were, they said, I, this is the tour guide said this, they were covering... Potatoes. Potatoes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were covering potatoes and someone was like, some like old lady was like, oh, can you grab those potatoes in that little sack over there? And someone like opened the sack and it was like the unicorn tapestries. Yeah. Which I thought was, that was great. But um, they're beautifully restored and like I said, they're definitely worth checking out on their own. Um, beautiful colors and whatnot. So this first one is called uh, the... Hunters enter the woods, mm -hmm. and the hunters are entering the woods. With their dogs. Yeah, they're, they're, you got these fine young gentlemen with their long hair and their beautiful garbs with their spears and their dogs, and then that one guy in the top right is like, yo, I found something. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not sure whether like they're looking for a unicorn, but um, according to like the story, you know, the final one, it there's a big debate whether they were looking for the unicorn or not looking for it. Mm -hmm. But um, either way, they're they're set for the day. Yeah, they were set for the day, and uh, like I love this because it's, it shows the story of like, hey, let's go hunting, and this one guy is like, hey, I found something. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> all right. But uh, what I really like about this, like, even though it's flattened out because you know it's a tapestry and it's flattened out, there is a sense of depth. Yeah. Because of the vanishing point of the trees, all the way in the right, and the the guy in the, in the trees, background back there, he's smaller. Yeah. Um, so obviously these things are decorative. They mm -hmm. were made to like decorate, um, but there's no sense in like why just make it decorative. Let's tell a story too. Mm -hmm. So um, you guys must have been rich to you know order this made. Yeah, this was actually made for um, Anne of Brittany mm -hmm. for her marriage to King Louis the I can't remember what number. King Louis the X two two. <laughs> so X two two. Yeah, X22, X2, X-Men United. Um, so that's what, oh, let's move around to the next one, I guess, because yep. there's so much you can see in the next one. This one, there's so much in this if you look at it. Mm -hmm. This is where the argument for this whole story takes an, is an allegory for Jesus mm -hmm. and, the, and the passion. And the name you know, of this tapestry is? The name of this tapestry is The Unicorn is Found, mm -hmm. where the unicorn is found. So what we have is the... Hunters now they grew from like six to five. I'm, I'm sorry, to twelve hunters. This is a pack of people. Yeah, this is a pack. <laughs> it's a pack of people. It really is. Like they're about to gang up on this poor unicorn, um, and we see that the unicorn is in the middle of dipping its horn in a stream. Mm -hmm. Now the story is that a snake had poisoned the stream with its venom, and the only way to purify it is by unicorn magic. working its magic. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have the unicorn doing its thing and the animals are just waiting around. They're mm -hmm. waiting for him to finish so that they can start drinking again. Um, and then you have the, the hunters coming all up, like creeping on, mm -hmm. on this guy. And this is where the allegory begins. We have the snake, which is, you know, standing yeah, for the devil, devil, obviously. And then the whole, the, only the unicorn can purify the stream meaning only Jesus can save us from original sin. Mm -hmm. You know, that's standing right there like only he can do that there's 12 hunters huh. 12 hunters there's like there's 12 apostles and the one on the left is pointing out the unicorn mm -hmm. just like Judas pointed out Jesus right before they were 
And he's a little, the I guess he's the largest one or the most uh, fully shown since his whole body is shown, you know, not yeah. just the torso. Yeah, so head. Uh, that's uh, made because he's so significant. Yep. You know, they, they want you to see this guy. Like, hey, check it out. Look at it. And he's pointing to his butt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, here we have, this is the scene right before the big attack happens. Mm -hmm. And that's next one is the Perfect. unicorn is attacked. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Look at this bad boy. So he jumps into the stream to try to avoid his attackers, and there's just so much movement that's captured in this in this scene. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm watching the still of like an action film, like you know this part. Or a splash movie. page in a comic. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. so comic booky. I'm looking for staples down the middle. <laughs> it is a splash page, You're right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, we have here the unicorn is trying to get away from its attackers, but obviously they're outflanking it. Yep. They got their spears ready, the dogs. It's wounded, you know, there's blood going down its back. Mm -hmm. um, and the unicorn does not look like it wants to put up a fight. You know, it looks like it just wants to get out of there. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, the castle in the background, it suggests that the passage of time, mm -hmm. that the unicorn had been chased to the edge of the forest. Oh, but then again, you look at the first one, and they're like, hey, the part of the edge of the forest. Oh, there's a unicorn here. You know, and, uh, I'll bring it up again, but in sequential art or in comic books, you know, especially here with the Western take, you know, the action tends to go from left to right. Yeah. Yeah, you read it left to right. Exactly. Uh, so, I, I can't remember anything else that I can get out of this photo, but either way, the... the oh, these two guys on the top left. Mm -hmm. These guys over here. The, noblemen. Yeah, these noblemen. They're part of the hunting pack. They are conspiracy. They're conspiring. What's the word I'm looking for? Conspiring. Cons conspiring. They're conspiring. Plotting. They're plotting because, um, well, they're trying to devise a plan to capture the unicorn because in the next scene, the unicorn starts kicking ass. Yep. Look at this guy. Impaling. Like, this is where unicorn just <laughs> like, rah, impale. I love it. So the unicorn is kicking. It's bucking. It's stabbing dogs. Yep. And this guy is about to, like, ream his, his spear right into it. Yeah, that dog uh, got it pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, that poor dog. Yeah. He just he's just you know doing what he's meant to do, but either way, um, the we got uh, on the top left mm -hmm. castle two there's this castle yeah. meaning now the battleground has been taken out of the forest. Mm -hmm. So they're in they they brought the unicorn out into the open. So it probably because they can't hide in the woods and whatnot. There's two guys again like they're conspiring again, but now they're they're thinking of a plan. Like you see, there's more action in this guy's in in his pose. Yeah, you know he's like let's do this. Because if you notice, the hunters, some of them aren't even fighting. Some of them are kind of like either catching up or just like passively like just letting the unicorn fight. Mm -hmm. Because it's obvious that they're getting overwhelmed. It's obvious that this unicorn is putting up a really good fight. He's taking out their dogs. He's kicking and he's bucking. Um, it's only maybe one or two of them are like in really active, aggressive fighting stances. One of them even has a spear loaded at this point. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're getting overwhelmed by the, the unicorn. I don't think they expected it to put up this much of a fight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or use that horn in that yeah. manner. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> That's so cool. Like, yeah, like When people think of unicorns, they don't think of like, they just think of these majestic creatures with beautiful horns in their head. But no, he's, he's impaling people. He's impaling things. It's great. I, I thought this would have been so much better if you sound like the unicorn impaling somebody. Mm -hmm. oh, like in um, Cabin in the Woods. Just, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, from what I've heard and kind of read, a uh, unicorns, unicorn myth back in the day was uh, I think they were a little bit more violent. Yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty stoic creatures. Yeah, they're pretty stoic creatures. Um, but yeah, the, um, I should mention that before that there is an obvious reference. There's a lot of myths references mm -hmm. to the unicorn. Like obviously, the people who made this or the person who made this knew about unicorns because if we go back to the unicorns found. I should have mentioned before, mm -hmm. the guys, the hunters are waiting for the unicorn to finish its magic mm -hmm. because the myth is you must never get in the way of a unicorn while it's performing magic. So I think it's kind of ironic that these hunters are waiting for the unicorn to finish before they kill it mm -hmm. because it kind of shows like the respect that they have for the creature or just the respect to like or the superstition that they have about the myth. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, to go back here to the unicorn defending itself. And bam, impale, impalation and kicking. This is one of my favorite ones. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's really good. Any significance to that tree? There's, the fruit? Um, I, not that I would know of, mm -hmm. but I know that a lot of the, fa the flora and the fruits in this whole series are not by coincidence. Everything is intentional. Yeah, because there's a lot of detail, as you said, into the plants, yeah. the trees. Um, 
Just the general floor. Yeah, the, the cloisters itself, they hold um, like lectures and whatnot mm -hmm. about specifically the flora and the fruits in these tapestries and what they represent. They literally break down which what flowers are in here and mm -hmm. what that could mean because this tapestry holds like a, it's I think almost a good 50 or 60 of like different types of flowers going on in this whole series mm. um, but anyways we go on to the next one which is weird because this one is the only tapestry yeah. that has been destroyed like a kid ripped out a page out of your comic book and covered <laughs> it in potatoes <laughs> <laughs> so this this uh, this part, this scene is called the Mystic Capture of the Unicorn, and it survives in two fragments. On the f on the left, we have this gentleman blowing his horn. But why is he blowing a horn? You know what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Well, if we go to the other, the right one, we see this really like passe girl, mm -hmm. uh, just like making a motion of somewhat a signal. Yeah, it's a signal, like it's a hand signal, and we see the unicorn, obviously right here. It's wounded, so we know this takes place after the unicorn has defended itself. Mm -hmm. So that's how you can really know the timeline. Um, the, it's in some sort of trance because the dog behind it is licking its wound. Yeah. And there is a hand on the unicorn's neck right under its beard as well. Uh, the story behind this is that, according to the myth, the only way you can catch a unicorn is with a virgin. It was beauty that killed the beast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what? The, so those hunters that were conspiring before, apparently they made a pen mm -hmm. and they placed the virgin in the middle. And so the unicorn, being attracted to the virgin, walks into the pen and just in, is in this trance of the unicorn. And then we get this this bitch over here, like making her hand signals to yeah. the who, to the hunter who calls. The other guys. The unicorn guy honey potted. He did. <laughs> he got honey potted. He did. Yeah. <laughs> That's poor guy. But I think there's more allegories to this again. The whole virgin, the unicorn can only be captured mm -hmm. by the virgin, and, and like, and the whole pen. The mm -hmm. fact that the unicorn is in a pen that has a virgin in it alludes to the Virgin Mary mm -hmm. and her womb. How the only thing that contained Jesus was the virgin's womb. Mm -hmm. You know, like the only thing that can house like the perfect baby is the perfect womb, hmm. which is a pure one, a virgin one. Maiden. Um, the, I don't know who the bitch is supposed to be. I don't like her, all right, because she's the reason why this majestic creature gets caught. Mm -hmm. All right, so in the next one we have, uh, we have two scenes happening at the same time in the unicorn is killed and brought to the castle. On the top left, we have the brutal, brutal scene of the unicorn getting killed. And, and his tongue like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's like really drunk <laughs> but we have the hunters just stabbing the hell out of this unicorn the dogs attacking it like this poor unicorn like there, there's a good there's a guy drinking the blood yeah it's horn they like, got like yeah. a very long silly straw <laughs> <laughs> well, look, he's catching the blood and drinking it uh, and of course the unicorn gets mounted on a horse his and his uh horn gets cut off mm -hmm. they put a crown of thorns around him for some reason and he gets brought to this couple on the right who are said to be the commissioners of the hunt the husband and his wife mm -hmm. and the townspeople yeah, nobility the townspeople behind them all waiting for the hunters and, and waiting to get a, a glimpse of this animal mm -hmm. so you can tell there's a myth already here like even even when quote unquote unicorns existed, yeah. they were so rare that people would gather just to see a dead one. For miles around. <laughs> For miles around! You know, come see the dead unicorn! Yeah. Um, the dogs on the left are, they look like they're bowing. It could either be because they're bowing to the nobility mm -hmm. or they're bowing because they realize that they kind of were in. Yeah, they just did a dick they, move. they fucked up. You know, like, <laughs> like, damn, like, you know, this majestic creature, we just kind of ripped it open. You're still know? getting fed, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, allegory of plenty yep. in this scene right here. We have first off the unicorn when it's being killed is attacked in its ribs. The final that crushing blow is in its ribs, the one that's most bloody. Mm -hmm. It alludes to the wounds that Christ suffered during spear the passion. Spear on the side. Yeah. yeah, spear on the side. The guy drinking the unicorn's blood is a reference to the myth, mm -hmm. you know, where the unicorn blood heals you. But it also could be seen as the whole. Um, my uh, Jesus's blood is wine mm -hmm. thing how he's drinking it it's red like wine so you know drink this in memory of me the whole last supper thing okay the blood of the blood of the Christ and whatnot um, and in between these two scenes um, the hunter 
hold that's drinking. Mm -hmm. He's holding a spear, and there's a hunter who's walking with the mountain unicorn. He's holding another spear. They overlap and create a cross. See that? Ah, yeah, see. it's hidden. It's like a little Easter egg. It's hidden. It's right there. Um, the crown of thorns mm -hmm. around the unicorn's neck, obviously a reference to the crown of thorns that yeah, Jesus had during the Christ. Obvious, the fact that it, yeah, yeah, the, 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 the fact they were that being he, subtle in that one. No, not at all. But <laughs> I, what I think is what I think is subtle is that um, he's wearing the, the crown of thorns when he's being presented to the public, just mm -hmm. like Jesus was in The Passion. So, like, you know, you could read this as, like, everyone's come to see Unicorn, but it's also, like, everyone's come to see, you know, the death of the Unicorn, too, mm -hmm. the way they came to see Christ and whatnot. Um, lady is holding a rosary. Yep. A little rosary. So, that's another thing. Like I said, A lot of detail. A lot of detail. Uh, this was... I'm surprised they used, like, pieces of, like, silver in this. They did? Yeah. yeah. Silver and, and a bunch of silver pigment, uh... Bunch of different beautiful colors, like metal threads. Like yeah. this had a lot of work. <laughs> it did. It really did. That's why it took almost ten years to create this whole series. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then finally, the next one is this is considered to be the standalone piece from this whole tapestry series because it doesn't really have anything to do with the whole passion allegory. Mm -hmm. What we have is the unicorn alive and well, um, no wounds on him. Those little red drops you see on him are coming from that tree. They're actually pomegranate juices. But he is leashed to that tree, mm -hmm. and he's in a pen. This piece is called the Unicorn in Captivity. Obviously, his horn is, is fine. So it's this is either read as part of the story where maybe this is the resurrection of Jesus. Yes. But it's more... Yeah, with the with being penned in, I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, if Jesus wasn't resurrected and then, like, put on display for everyone, he was, he was you know, lifted off to heaven. But um, it's more... People think that this is more a allegory for marriage, hmm. you know. And since this was done in celebration of marriage, it could be a thing. Uh, the pomegranate tree is a symbol of fertility, symbol of good fortune and abundance okay. in marriage. The pen that the unicorn is in, plus the, the whole little, little leash around its neck, so could be a symbol of like the ring. Oh, the, okay. The marriage ring, you know, whatnot. Uh, those are kind of the big. To the only two references to marriage. Uh, apparently, actually, the f the flowers too mm -hmm. have something to do with marriage. But I ain't no botanist, so <laughs> uh, yeah, we have that. This piece is actually the most well known of the whole unicorn tapestry. Yeah, this one I kept seeing a lot in good resolution online. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of sticks out of the rest because it's not really. Yeah, it's it, it's first off, it's it's its own. It's a different orientation. Then the rest of the, if you go see these in, in person, the, uni, no, the unicorn tapestries are like nice squares, mm -hmm. but this is the only one that's a long rectangle. It's a vertical too. Hmm. So um, that gives you another, it could be maybe that's the way it was found, but it, it also it's just, this is not meant to be part of that story, I think. You know? Um, I like to think that maybe this one was made first. Mm -hmm. Oh, in celebration of the marriage. In celebration said. of the marriage, yeah. <clears throat> but um, yeah, there's that. There's that. Yeah, so. so yeah. Well, so this medieval art, this is what this is. Um, a lot of symbolism. A lot of symbolism, a lot of drawing from scripture, a lot of drawing from Bible, which is extremely apparent in most medieval art, um, commissioned by nobility. royalty and nobility. Yep. Yeah. So there we have it. Uh, this is a brief overview of the unicorn tapestries. Like I said, it's extremely worth the visit. So mm -hmm. go check it out, especially if you're in the New York area. In the cloisters. In the cloisters. Yeah. Um, so other than that, Fancy Dave, tell me what you think about these unicorns before we go. What, Man, what do you think of these? Mike, do I even have to say it? You, <laughs> you know like, me, Mike. I like, like it. it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, no, no. I, I do like it. And like I said, um, I do appreciate stories considering I'm a big comic book fan. I obviously saw that once I saw the series. I didn't even think about that until you brought it up, honestly. Yeah, it's like the first thing that kind of stuck out to me. So I do enjoy a good story, even though it's... It's quite the brutal ending. Yeah, sad ending. Yep. Well, well, if you actually that ending going. could be sad too. <laughs> if you're just in captivity, he looks so happy too. You're just like, oh, I'm happy. I think. <laughs> I think I'm okay with this. Oh, good. Yeah. All right, and you know, Art Bros approved, man. Yep. I love I love this series. It's one of my favorites. It really stayed with me when I saw it. Okay. All right. Anything so got, else? No, that's pretty much it. Oh no. Um, you can follow us on Facebook. Yep. Search the Art Bros on Facebook. We're on Twitter now, uh, at art underscore bros. 
Oh. So you can follow us on Twitter now. And, uh, of course, subscribe to us on YouTube. Subscribe you know. to us on YouTube. That would tell help us, us out a lot. Tell us you like these. You're going to see a lot more. And uh, share us out. You know, tell people about it. Yes. And if you've never heard these unicorn types before, you are welcome. Mm hmm You're welcome. And if not, you're super cool people now. Word. <laughs> All right. So I guess till next time, people. Till next time. Art Bros.